But Vizenkov's not perfect. You've seen his defense kind of go up and down. Uh, I think even in these last two games in the back-to-back, you've seen a nice defensive moment and then a pretty glaringly bad defensive moment where he gets caught in the air, gets beat, or doesn't get in front of a guy or something like that. But one of the things that just constantly shines through with Vizenkov is his instinct and attitude about the game. Because he'll turn around and if he has a bad defensive moment, it's almost like you can count on him in the next couple defensive possessions or whenever he gets back in the game to somehow come up with a great steal where he uses his instincts and his hands to come up with something. And then also, I feel like more often than not, which was surprising to us, I thought he would have had more of those bad defensive moments more frequently, but he more often than not seems to be holding his own. And we saw him, was it the Brooklyn game where he had 14 points, and it, which is a career high? Yeah. No, it was the Suns game. That was the Suns game? I believe it was the Suns game. Yeah, you're right. 14 points, looked, had some good defensive moments, all this stuff. And, you know, I think even in garbage time against the Clippers, Vizenkov played with kind of like that summer league team, as we call it. And he looked like the best player on the floor. I think he hooked up with like three assists for guys. He had a couple big rebounds. I think he hit a three late in the game. I mean, there's just something about Vizenkov where it's like, you like what you're getting out of him. He's definitely put you in a position where you can play Lyles and him together, which was kind of the big ambition, the thing that really came to our minds first when we were talking about him and Lyles being on the same team. And a lot of that's worked out really well. But it's like, now I keep thinking, I'm like, well, how good can he be? Because he's exceeded expectations, or at least I would have thought it would have taken a longer time for him to get to this point. You see the instinct, you see the smarts, you see the positive grasp and understanding of his role and what it what he what it takes for him to expand that doing the little things taking open shots all that stuff and then you kind of factor in the shooting touch the quick release and the fact that he does have some pretty decent size for the nba i mean at like six seven i think or is he six nine he's six nine i think listed as six nine so has good nba size is there a point where he's just going to have more of an elevated role off the bench Or is he going to develop into something more? I mean, where do you really see Sasha Vizenkov going? Because I think in exceeding the expectations, he's kind of broadened the potential scope of that. What do you think? Yeah, I think he's more than capable of doing a lot more in this league than his role at the moment or just being a bench guy. I mean, I think an easy guy to compare him to is Nemanja Bialica when he was on the Kings. Kind of just a big (laughs) European guy, I guess. I guess that's not the only comparison, but just like a stretch for... Vizenkov's a little, I think, quicker than Bielitsa was, but just like a, a guy, high basketball IQ, going to always make the right play, even if he can't make the play physically, because he does have his limitations. He he knows what he's going to do, and he, I, I just think he's he's a very smart, high basketball IQ player. I mean, I, I think he can be a starter in this league, honestly. I think he can play a four, a good four. He's a good rebounder. He's a little undersized, as we were talking about, in length. I don't know if he has that quickness to guard a lot of threes in this league. I'd rather have him be at the four, personally. But and I guess that brings up size again. But I, I, th- I think he has a, not a, like a ton of potential. I don't think he'll ever be like an all-star or MVP candidate. But I think he can be, I, I think, one of your typical European players, like a Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, just like a guy who's, you know, play, do the fundamentals well, shoot a high clip from, make a lot of right plays, know your place on the team. I, that's what I see him being. And I think that's good enough to be a starter in this league. And maybe he will. I mean, we signed him to what, a three-year deal. I, I could see at one point him starting on this team. I really can. I think he's, he has that three-point shot. And I think he would just really know his place on, in the uh, offensive lineup. And I'd rather have him shooting than Barnes personally. I'm not saying right now is that that's what we need, but. I think I would be more okay with him taking a scattered amount of threes than Barnes. But yeah, I think I think he can be a starter in this league for sure. I think, I mean, I, that's why I brought this up because I was like starting to think that a little bit, like actually kind of have some belief in it. And I'm glad you brought up Bohan Bogdanovich because I was going to mention him because people always compare him to Belitsa. And of course, it makes sense. Belly played with the Kings. Kings fans are pretty familiar with him, but... Pretty quickly into Vizenkov's time with the Kings, I was like, no, that's not really fair. He definitely is more of a Bohan Bogdanovich. And when you start thinking about that, that's almost a higher ceiling in terms of the effect. I mean, Bohan's had a really nice career in the NBA. I mean, I think it's it's interesting. You talk about three or the four. He can play the three. I mean, if he's, if he were to start, Murray would be guarding 
the three and perimeter guys and stuff like that, you'd be hiding Vizinkov defensively. You would lose a lot. I think there's a long way before he starts starting because I think the defense would have to take some significant steps. But that comes with time, and we've seen how much he's grown in just such a short time. Again, it's like I'm not ready to come up with a conclusion as to where he'll end up, but the idea that that can happen, I think, is definitely come into frame at this point. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But Bohan Bogdanovich, I think, is a really interesting kind of comparison there. You know, smart, good shooter, has some decent size, even if it's, there's some lacking athleticism. There's definitely a world where Vizenkov can really kind of live up to what I think Olympiakos and European fans would naively or correctly assume is the, the ceiling of, of their guy. But who knows? 